compared to other CARICOM members who have come here. Dr. Baugh had this to say. There's a chart here which um, reviews the total free movement of skills between 1996 and 2008, and it shows that Jamaica issued a total of 1,393 um, skills certificates or received from other countries, whereas Trinidad and Tobago did 1,685, a little bit more than Jamaica, um, in terms of um, those being rejected, it's, well, I don't really have that number, it's not very much, it's not really significant. But there, there is a, a, a movement that is taking place and the recent um, amendment to the Foreign Nationals and Commonwealth Citizens Act is going to facilitate that movement in Jamaica. And we are satisfied, having done a review of the CSME, we are satisfied that countries are complying with the CSME. This means that as Jamaicans, once we are trained as a skilled professional and we acquire the necessary certification that CARICOM countries recognize, we are free to seek employment in other Caribbean countries. And this is not just for construction. Areas such as cosmetology, catering, entertainment, any field in which you have an interest. Let me give you an example of the entertainment industry. The tourism industry, for example, some work was done by the University of Western East some years ago that indicated, they want, we wanted to find out at the time what were the, the factors that drive people to come to a destination, to, to a hotel bed. They want to know why do you come to hotels. And interestingly, we discovered, uh, it was Ramji Singh and Alan Wright who did that work. They discovered that it was events that drive people to a destination. Rebel Salute, Some Fest, and um, Jazz and Blues. Those are deliberate strategies as well as Reggae Marathon and Calabash when we had Calabash, but we're promoting other literary festivals like that. Those are very deliberate because behind those, those key drivers are several industries and the supply chain that feeds that. For example, when you have jazz and blues, 1,100 people work on the set, on that, it, on that whole um, venue before it is actually staged. So you see the, the, the level of employment. And the, it's not just for the, per, the promoter of the event, but it is the light man, the sound man, the groundskeeper, the people who, the vendors who are putting up their booths. So the construction industry is working because they have to construct all of those booths. You have the health people who have to make sure that the sanitation is up to snuff. You have the security people. So there are thousands of, of um, players that actually put that stage together, that, that venue together before the actual event is hosted. Then when the event is actually hosted, you have the musicians, you have the sound man, you have the light man, you have people like Phase 3 production and all that they bring to the table. So if you look backwards and you link that to what you learn in school, those subjects actually lead you now to careers in those areas. So what we have done at Heart Trust, if you, if you follow that tra trend of argument, you go from high school, you can either come into Heart Trust to do your skill areas, you know, any of those skills that you like. We're up to our final break here on Matters Arising. When we return, we will explore the CARICOM options that are open to certified individuals, including university graduates, both to seek employment and also to create your own jobs. We're talking about entrepreneurship. We'll be back after this break. Rise to the occasion, look at yourself and say you're strong. No one can stop you, oh yeah. Rise to the Welcome back to Matters Arising. Today's matter is the issue of unemployment and Jamaicans. We've heard that a large number of Jamaicans are without a skill and that this is a major factor contributing to unemployment. We spoke to Dr. Carolyn Hale of the Heart Trust NTA and she explained that being trained by the National Training Program and being certified by the NCT VET right here in Jamaica equips Jamaicans to seek employment throughout the Caribbean. Minister Kenneth Barr explained that the CSME agreement has opened CARICOM to Jamaicans for the past 50 years. Now, this open market is not only open for us to seek employment, it also allows for the creation of new business ventures, yes, entrepreneurship throughout CARICOM. In an effort to better open our eyes to the concept of being entrepreneurs, Dr. Rosalie Hamilton, Professor of Entrepreneurship and Development at UTEC, explored the concept with us. For decades, scholars have been trying to grapple with this concept and there are a range of definitions. The one I like is the idea that entrepreneurs are creating and exploiting opportunities. In fact, 
one scholar thinks about it as exploiting opportunities without regard to the resources you have under your control. And it speaks to the fact that, you know, whatever resources you have available, you need to exploit it. Now, because in Jamaica, for decades, we have ingested this policy of going to school and then getting a good job, Dr. Hamilton explained that we now have a challenge creating this paradigm shift from the ideology of seeking employment to creating our own. Well, it is changing. That's very important because I think increasingly individuals are recognizing that you can't just sit back and wait for a job that increasingly the change in economic environment is such that people have to be creative and start to think about creating their own sources of income. So the economic environment is forcing that change in attitude. Where you can't just, you know, go to school and expect to land a job at the end of the day. So that is changing and I think it's changing for the good because it's also forcing individuals who have jobs to think about being entrepreneurial in their jobs. You have to be creative and innovative um, in order to add value to the jobs that you have. And again, Dr. Barr reminds us that the freedom that exists because of the CSME actually broadens the horizon and creates a regional playing field for us to exercise this entrepreneurial skill. This is where we are weak. And I, I don't think that we are taking advantage of the opportunities that exist. Um, the mainland countries like um, Suriname, Guyana, Belize have a lot of opportunities because they are underpopulated, have a lot of land, and have a lot of resources. And the uh, invitations have been issued by President Jack Doe himself and with my colleague minister in Belize to inquire as to why more Jamaicans are not taking advantage of the opportunities and the, the resources that are available in those countries. Many, many years ago, some Jamaicans went to Belize and, and started the citrus um, industry over there. And now Belize produces more, more juice concentrate than we produce in citrus. Of course, the process of starting a new business venture is not simple, and doing so in a foreign country is even more challenging. But as we said before, this is an option, a channel, an opportunity that is open for us that we should most definitely explore. The fact is, there are some resources that may be available in other countries that may not be available here in Jamaica. We just have to be aware that the scope is now much, much wider. As an expert on international trade, Dr. Hamilton has some advice for persons who want to consider this option. Well, first of all, don't think about giving up. <laughs> this is a tough environment and it's very difficult and I know many people would have left school and have, have been finding it difficult to find jobs. I, I think the first thing to do is to recognize that the market that you're in wants you to add value. Just have that in your head. Nobody is in the market trying to give you a salary, which is what most people want. A salary, and I, I say this to young people, think about volunteering your service. Right? Just volunteer your service to open that door, to have a foot in the door of any business. Don't go for a job, just go to contribute. And once you're there and your employers see that you can add value, then it's a no-brainer. They'll want to keep you. Of course, alternatively, if you can't find that job, then you really have to think about finding, um, creating your own business. And to, to think about finding a job and creating a, your own business, not only in Jamaica, but really explore the Caribbean region. Exploit the opportunities for free movement of people. And Dr. Hale told us of a number of heart trainees who have also moved on to great things internationally. Now, there are a number of people who have benefited from world skills. We have, for example, Brian Lumley, a young fellow who went to JC and decided he did not want to go the traditional route of lawyer, doctor, engineer. He had a passion for food. And luckily, he had parents who agreed with him and allowed him to go to Runway Bay, where he, he honed his craft. He, has, he is now the personal executive chef to the French ambassador. Then there is a, another young man, one of his contemporaries, who is working, I think he's also the, a personal um, chef to the deputy, the, the, to the US charge. 
and also there is another there's a there's a gentleman called Carl Thomas who, who is well known in industries and executive chef there is also OJ Jaja who has his own business based on Jamaican cuisine in the area of beauty services we have our own Sasha Moy Batik and Sasha Moy um, she competed in Brazil where she won uh, in in the hemispheric world skills hemispheric in, in March of last year she won a gold medal uh, Sasha Moy goes on to Australia in July of this year to compete in their in their national competition and then she goes on to to London in October where she will compete internationally in the in the world skills international in the area of hairstyling then there are a number of other people there's another gentleman called Brian Morsby, who is now working with us at, um, at, at, at in IT here at Heart, and there's another young miss again beauty services, Alia Wedderburn, who also teaches the skill area for us. So these these areas have really, and these opportunities have opened the world to many of these youngsters. Sasha Moy again, take Sasha Moy for example. Sasha Moy is from Sandy Bay in Clarendon. And Sasha Moy will tell you that it never entered her mind when she was in Clarendon that she would be all over the world simply because she has she has a talent for beauty services and she has honed that talent and she's now one of the best in the world and that was her dream the advice from us here at matters arising whatever your passion is find a way to get the training and certification so you can earn from it do what you love and the world will love you for it and if you're thinking of starting your own venture dr hamilton has a bit of advice again well i would say the first thing someone should do if you want to go into business is to get help don't think that you have to do everything by yourself so I would start by finding people who can help um, people who could help to make sure your accounts and your cash flow and your um, your your whole business plan is in the shape that it needs to be in in order to give you a good sense of whether this business is viable that's a very important perhaps the first place to start set up a, fit, a financial cash flow see how much money you need to get this thing going and do your analysis do all kinds of scenario analysis to ensure that down the road this thing can be valid and look at your assumptions very very carefully but talk to people once you have this on paper you walk